Welcome to this presentation on the reformation of biogas to fuel a solid oxide fuel cell. This presentation was prepared by Christopher Bertan, Cody Stevens, Nico Demas Davison, Matthew Main, and myself, Aaron Fulton. We will be providing a description of the process and a usable example design. For the process, we are going to look at taking a biogas comprised of methane and carbon dioxide to create hydrogen that is oxidized on the anode of the fuel cell to create energy. The schematic here is a basic block flow diagram of the process. There is a biogas and stream feed that is reformed into the fuel that is fed to the anode of the fuel cell. There is also a cross current stream of air directly to the cathode that provides oxygen to the fuel cell. We will now investigate a more detailed description of each step of this process. Here is the operation of the reformer reactor. The reactor utilizes a nickel based catalyst at 1000 degrees Celsius in one atmosphere. The nickel catalyst was used based on the research performed by Borelli and his team. The most desirable product from the process is hydrogen and is achieved through the desired reactions. Of these three reactions, the most desired and most common is the methane and water to carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Even though hydrogen is more desirable, the fuel cell will also utilize the carbon monoxide that is produced here. The carbon monoxide is not detrimental to the process and converts some of the carbon monoxide into the more desirable hydrogen. There is unfortunately also a series of undesired reactions that may occur in the reactor. Two of these reactors reactions create solid carbon buildup. This process is known as coking. This buildup from coking will reduce the efficiency of the reactor and if collected may cause damage. This buildup must be cleared, cleaned regularly to prevent this damage from occurring and to keep the reactor operating at optimal conditions. This final undesired reaction is less efficient and will lead to more waste even though it still creates the desired products. Now we will cover the solid oxide fuel cell. The fuel cell utilizes a nickel based catalyst for both the anode and the cathode. The nickel catalyst was again used based on the research performed by Chumaluski and his team. The desired products from the re reformer are sent and consumed on the anode side of the reactor. The primary reaction consumes a mole of hydrogen to produce water and results in two moles of electrons being passed through the electrical load. This electrical load is used to create energy. The second reaction with carbon monoxide occurs in the same manner as the hydrogen reaction but produces carbon dioxide in place of the water. This secondary reaction is what allows the reformer to produce carbon monoxide as a desirable reaction. However, hydrogen to water is preferred reaction due to the environmental impact of carbon dioxide production. The fuel cell operates with the assumption of unlimited oxygen from the airflow. At this point, we will cover the designs used to model the reformer followed by the fuel cell. The reformer was modeled as a packed bed reactor. The amount of catalyst is determined at this point by the amount of molar flow. For the design of the fuel cell, an easily changed design was created. Here is a graphical representation of the fuel cell created in SOLIDWORKS. The stacked planar design allows for flexibility during the design process. The designer can decide on the size of the fuel cell dependent upon the max flow rate of the fuel. The interconnectors give a representation of the flow from the fuel and the air dependent upon placement of the fuel cell. At this point, we will be giving numerically solved in a numerically solved example to, of a design of this process. The program MATLAB was used to model both the reformer and fuel cell results. The reformer example we performed used an equimolar biogas composition at a flow rate of 100 kilomoles per hour. The biogas is assumed to contain solely methane and carbon dioxide. The figure on the left represents the conversion of methane dependent upon the amount of catalyst used. 
The figure on the right is a representation of the molar flow composition based on the catalyst and the amount of methane converted. The series of equations used to calculate this and all other further calculations done for this design can be seen in the MATLAB program that accompanies this screencast. The fuel cell was modeled using the same 100 kmol per hour biogas feed but using 100 kilograms of catalyst in the reformer. The large amount of catalyst was used to represent the potential of the fuel cell. Realistically for industry, the conversion of methane would be much lower due to economic reasons of using 1,000 kilograms of catalyst to obtain the 90% conversion of methane. The fuel cell calculation was based on the research performed by Chumaluski and scaled up to fit our desired design. The electrolyte had a thickness of 40 microns and the total cell surface area of 50 meters squared. The fuel composition after the reformer is represented by the fuel molar composition chart. The assumption of excess oxygen was made to ensure the reaction went to the full extent possible. The power created by the fuel cell is calculated in a three-step process based on the amount of hydrogen and carbon monoxide converted. The first step requires the use of the Nernst equation to calculate voltage. This calculation is followed by the resistive load equation calculation and finished through the power equation. These calculations follow the methods researched by the Chumaluski team. The figure is a representation of power production of the the cell dependent on the cell voltage. At this time, we'd like to touch base on the safety concerns of using solid oxide fuel cells and the reformer. Safety is an essential when planning design for an industrial sized fuel cell. The safety regulations must consider the care of the facility, equipment, and most importantly, its employees. When dealing with solid oxide fuel cells, the following hazards are of concern. Electric shock, fire, explosion, general exposure, and material handling. Due to the high combustion factor of hydrocarbon fuels, fire and explosion are the most important safety hazards not to be overlooked. In various stages of the process, there is potential for explosion hazard. The reformer reactor uses a biogas input largely made of methane. The output products will also contain methane again and the extremely flammable hydrogen gas. Extreme care is need needs to be taken with both of these components to prevent explosion. Around the solid oxide fuel cell itself, potential electrical hazard is introduced and requires comprehensive controls and handling. The chemical carbon monoxide is also highly toxic to humans and is present throughout the process. Exposure to this chemical could lead to severe injury and or death. The use of valves, controls, and sensors are necessary within this process to ensure safety implementation techniques are, are followed to standard. At this point, we would like to thank all the participants of the research required to perform this research and screencast. This is the end of the presentation and we would like to thank you for your attention and time.